Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Sharp Weekly. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can get started with writing BDD tests, meaning the Behavior Driven Development Test, using Cucumberish. Now, Cucumberish is a tool that is inspired from the actual tool, which is called Cucumber, which is used in Ruby on Rails community. And there are many other tools that are inspired from Cucumber. Specflow is another one of those and Cucumberish, and then you have uh, Swift Cucumber or Cucumber Swift and so on. Now the basic idea about behavior driven development is that you are going to be writing the specifications, you can see on the screens right now, and you can execute these specifications. And the specifications will be in plain English as you can see. And the main idea is that you are getting together with the manager, QAs, the tester, developers, and the domain experts and then you are writing these specifications that can be executed. Now, since anybody can read these specifications, it makes it much clearer that what you're trying to achieve. Anyway, the BDD topic is actually pretty large and I cannot really cover it in a 10 or even 20 minute videos, but I'm going to show you and you'll get a taste of BDD development and using Cucumberish. I am currently working on a separate course which will teach you iOS development in a behavior driven development uh, format, uh, which will be released later on, all right? So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we need to do is we need to install and integrate Cucumberish with our application. And that part is actually a little bit tricky, but I'm gonna show you all the different steps that happen, all right? Now let's go ahead and create Xcode, a new project. So here we go. I'm just going to go ahead and create a brand new project. A single view application is perfectly fine. I'm just going to call it to do uh, BDD. One thing that you will note over here is that I am adding the unit test as well as the UI test. There we go. Desktop sounds perfect. And there we go. So our project is actually created. That's fine. Now I want to download the package, which is Cucumberish. And there are many different ways of integrating Cucumberish package or framework into your application. The easiest and the quickest one is to use CocoaPods. So make sure that you have CocoaPods installed. I already have CocoaPods installed. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to jump into the to do BDD folder and going to say pod init. So this is going to create an empty pod file. I can go ahead and open that file now. And this file is going to allow me to say that which pods do I have to download and for which target. So right now I'm interested in the UI or the BDD test. I, would, I wouldn't say that these are UI tests that I'm writing. Uh, usually when you use uh, BDD or behavior driven development, you are writing acceptance testing. So maybe we should rename that or we should have renamed that to acceptance test. But anyway, we're going to say over here that we will be using a special special pod, which will be cucumberish. And that's it. Let's go ahead and close it. And we are going to now say pod install, and hopefully it's going to download and install cucumberish. And it's pretty much done. Now we can actually open up this folder and make sure to open up from now onwards the workspace file, not the Xcode project. So let me go ahead and double click on that. And that's going to open up the to, to do BDD project, the workspace. There we go. Now we need to do a couple of different things to make it work. The first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that we go and select the target, which is to do BDD UI test, go to build setting and search for something called a module. You'll see over here under the packaging, there is something called defines module and it's set to no. Let's go ahead and go set it to true. That's the first thing that you need to do. Okay, now the next things that you need to do is you need to create a features folder over here because when you're writing plain English in a format called Gherkin, uh, you have to write it or you have to put it in a features folder. So what I'm going to do, I already have a folder, like a real folder, 
not a group and I'm simply going to drag that folder into over here. Make sure that you select create folder reference and we are adding it to the to do BDD UI test. Let's go ahead and check out what's in the folder. I'm just going to delete that file. We are not going to be using that particular file. Don't worry about that. There we go. It's gone. So the folder featured is currently empty. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to create a cucumberish loader file. So go ahead and add a new file. This actually will be an Objective-C file and we'll say next. The name of the file can be cucumberish loader.m. It's an implementation file. We're going to add that. That's fine. We'll also create a bridging header. That's also fine. There we go. Now we will go ahead and import our actual project, which in this case is to do BDD. You can see over here to do BDD test. And I believe you will also have to say, well, hyphen swift.h. So this will be the name of the project that we are in right now, hyphen swift.h. All right, let's go ahead and build that also. The next thing we need to do is we need to add some code so that it can actually initialize or load, in this case, uh, the Cucumberish framework. So we're going to go ahead and add that. Now, this is not really going to work because there is no such thing as Cucumberish initializer. All right, so what should we do at that point? Well, we have to create this particular file, Cucumberish initializer. Let's go ahead and copy that. I'm going to go ahead and create a new file, Swift. We'll call it Cucumberish initializer. This will be our file that's going to get executed. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and paste something in this file. Uh, well, first of all, we have to load a couple of different things. So let's go ahead and add that. There we go. Oops, make sure that you are adding it correctly. There we go. All right. Now we will go ahead and create the class, which is cucumberish initializer, which is going to be inheriting from NS object. And finally, we are going to go ahead and create an Objective C class level method, a static method, and we'll call it setup cucumberish. This is the actual function, if you remember, that you're calling right over here. Let's go back over here. And now I can call something called before. There we go. And over here is the one that I'm going to be start writing my actual test in a cucumber style of format. Now we're building a to-do list and we're going to get into it. Uh, but first thing we have to also do is we have to make sure that in the setup cucumberish function, so in the setup cucumberish, we are also loading all the different features that will be available. So this means that we will have to make sure that we are calling uh, this particular method. So let me actually show you over here. In setup, right here, we're going to call our bundle and all that stuff. This is basically saying then go ahead and load all the features in the features directory and then go ahead and run it. Now, right now, we don't really have anything in the feature directory, and this is where uh, we have to jump in and actually write a feature. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a new file over here. What should we call the file? We can call it to do list add item dot feature. Make sure that this is dot feature, all right? And now you will start with the actual feature. So what you are trying to do. Whenever you're writing the feature, you have to consult the business owners because they are the one who are telling you about the feature. So after discussing it with the business owner, you come up with a feature. Basically, the feature is to add an item. Add items to a to-do list. Okay, so that's a feature. What is the scenario? So 
one feature can have many, many different scenarios. So, so the scenario is, as a user, I want to add items to my, you can see I'm just writing English, to my to-do list so I can keep track of my tasks. Very good. And now we will start with the Gherkin language. Now the Gherkin language uh, begins with given, when, and then, all right? So there's also and, but in Cucumberish, there's no and, they can't really write that. Uh, given I launch the application, all right? Given I launch the app, when I enter, wash the car in the text field and press add button, then I should see the, I should see one item added to the list, right? Now, the great thing about writing in this format is that you as a developer can understand it, but also the business people can understand it. Now, in case you're wondering, hold on a second, is, are the business people going to come and run the app? No, no, they're not gonna do that. But when you are writing and when you are sharing and collaborating with a business person or the domain experts, and then you come up with all of these different features, the different scenarios. And when you're writing with them, it is that you understand the business because that's the main part of writing the application that you understand the business. So this was not written by a developer per se. This was written and collaborated with the business experts, the QA, the testers, everyone chime in and then they came up with this particular scenario, this particular story that we're trying to do, all right? Now, after this, you are going to start writing the test. So given I launched the app, so I'm just gonna copy this and you do have to copy these things like after the given, after the when, and after the then. So given I launch the app and I'm gonna go into my Cucumberish initializer and I can say over here, given, and this is coming from Cucumberish, I launched the app. Because it is eventually going to start checking the matching the string I launched the app with the thing that you write in the feature. It is going to pass in some arguments if there are any, but there are not. And there we go. So that's the given part. Now we have to do the when part. So when something, and the same thing will be over here, some sort of arguments if you're passing arguments. And if you look carefully, actually you are passing an argument, which in this case is wash the car. So I'm gonna select all of that stuff. And I'm going to copy it right here. Now, wash the car, we don't really really want to pass wash the car, we want to pass whatever is passed over here. So we can use regex expression to extract those values out. Now, there are many different regex expression. I found something on the web, which means that I can use something like this, which is basically saying that I can put the wash the car inside the braces, inside over here, and things like that. All right, you can use any other format that you like. And finally, we have then. This is where you will actually assert, you are saying that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side or something. Somehow, this is going to make the test pass or fail. So what should we write over here? Well, we already have the then part. Then I should see one, then I should see one item added to the list, okay? Then I can say over here, this part. Once again, with the one, we can actually add a placeholder instead of actually hard coding it one so that we can pass in anything we want. All right, now right now, this is not really going to do anything because you are not really doing anything in the given when and then. In the given, I want to launch the app. So XE UI application dot launch. That's pretty simple, great. Okay, when I entered something, in the text field and press add admin. So something, we need to get this value. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the task from the arguments. And from the argument, I can go ahead and get the zero argument because, well, we're only sending one argument and we can get it like that. All right. Now what we want to do is we want to get the task text field, task text field, task name text field, whatever you want to call it, XCUI application, 
dot text fields. And once again, we are going to use the task text field, which will be the accessibility identifier. We're going to get the task text field. I'm just going to say task text fields dot tab. First, I'm going to tap on it. And then I'm just going to go ahead and type some text in the text field. What is that text that we're going to type in the text field? Well, the text that you put right over here. So in this case, it will be task. I'm also going to append slash n with it so that after typing into the text field, we automatically press the return key so the keyboard can go away. And finally, I'm going to go ahead and say XCUI application. I need to click the button. So buttons and we'll say add task button. And I'm going to go ahead and say tap. All right. Now, what do we expect over here? Well, we expect that the items in the list would be one, but we need to get this expectation, right? So we're going to use the same exact format. We're going to say expected count, expected count equals to ARGS, which is arguments of zero. And we are going to go ahead and also unwrap this and it uh, may blow up also. And after unwrapping it, I'm also going to convert it into an integer. And now I can go ahead and actually get the actual count, which I can get from XC application. This is our running application dot tables dot children. And the type of the children in this case will be a cell dot count. And now we can use XCT a third and I can say expected count, unwrap it to the count. So we are expecting that the count is actually one. If I run this application right now, let's go ahead and do it actually, you'll see that it will fail. So if I simply go to product and say run the test, it's going to fail and the reason it's going to fail is that we have not really worked on our UI. So on our UI there's really nothing there and that's the reason that it will simply fail. All right, before running the app, one very, very important change is that this all code, when, which is where you're running it, the features, uh, make sure that this code is actually outside of the before function. So it should be inside the setup cucumberish, but it should be outside of setup cucumberish. You can see right now over here, the setup or uh, the before, it ends over here and the actual code that I'm talking about is inside the setup cucumberish function, but outside the before function. Okay, now let's go ahead and run this. Here we go, test. And you'll see that the test will actually fail because we don't really have any text field. We don't have button, we don't have list, we don't have anything. So if I go ahead and run the test, there we go, it actually fails. And if you check out the errors, you can see that the matching elements were not found and blah, blah, blah. So now we can actually go ahead and work on our actual application so that we can add all of those different controls. So let's go ahead and do that. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and add a V stack, which is a vertical stack. And we're gonna do it kind of quickly. So we'll go ahead and add a text field also text will say enter task. We will go ahead and say, I believe over here is text, I think. And we're gonna say task name. And we will, I am not going to style anything. Uh, I'm just gonna say accessibility identifier. And I'm just gonna call this a identifier. And I'm gonna call it task name text field. Make sure that the name is exactly that. So I'm just gonna say, task name text field and change that over here. You can see right over here, I'm calling it task text field. So make sure it's task name text field. So the name should be same or else it's not, it's just not gonna find it if you have different names. Task name, so we don't really have anything called task name. That will be a state property. So private var, you can say task name and that will be of type string. You can obviously see that I'm using surf UI. All right, there we go, that's fine. Uh, task name text field should be in quotes right there. Let's go ahead and check out our UI now. All right, 
can see it's failing. Here we go. Now it's not failing. There we go. Uh, maybe we can put out a little bit of a spacer so we can push everything on the top. That's fine. And you know what? I'm just going to add a little bit of padding. I can actually see the text box. There we go. Fine. Uh, now, finally, I can go ahead and add a button. I'm going to say add. And make sure that you add a accessibility identifier so that you can access the button identifier. I believe we are calling it add task button. Uh, let's go ahead and double check it because that's the most important thing that you should do is always double check it in the test. Okay, so we are calling it add task button. That's also good. Uh, let me go ahead and refresh that. Uh, the next thing we need to do is we need to add the task to some sort of an array. So we're going to go ahead and create an array. So task is fine. Uh, the array will be of string type and it will be an empty. When you do actually click a button, we can go ahead and say task.append and append the new element, which in this case is the name of the task. Great. And the final thing we need to do is we need to display it. So I'm just going to create a list. I would say it will iterate over the task and it will differentiate the task using the ID of the task. There we go. We will get the task, which is just a string, by the way. And then we will go ahead and say task. OK, let's go ahead and refresh that so that we can at least see our list. OK, that's great. Now I think we have all the elements, right? Now let's go back to our test, which looks like this. And let's go ahead and run the test. And now hopefully when we run the test, it's going to, uh, you know, allow us to interact with the elements, press the button, and then add it to the list. Okay, instead of wash the car, I think I saw, uh, I did wish the car. But let's see, and you can see the test actually passes. Let me go ahead and run the test again. Now the great thing about tests that are written like that is that Anybody can read the test and the test are these are the actual acceptance tests that we have written and this is not like the developer coming up with the test you are talking to a QA you're talking to the manager you're talking to the domain expert and then everyone collaborate to come up with this scenario or specification and these specifications are executables or they can execute. You can actually see that I actually ran this executable test using writing this kind of a test. And I think this is using this behavior driven development approach. It becomes very, very clear that what problem you are trying to solve because you're looking at the problem from outside in instead of inside out. Now, obviously, this is a very, very big topic. I don't want to go into it right now, but uh, I am working on a course where I will go through that how you can start using behavior driven development to write your test. So you're looking at the test from outside in and you know that these tests will produce when you're done with the test, when you when the test passes, you will know that you have completed a particular a scenario or a particular feature. And that's, I think, very, very important when you are doing software development, you're working towards completing the features. All right. So hopefully this will give you a little bit of idea of a behavior driven development using Cucumberish in iOS development. Now, a couple of different things I want to talk about now. First of all, I have created a Patreon page. So Patre Patreon dot com slash Hazem Sharp. And if you like my videos, you can definitely become a patron. Uh, that will be great. If you want to purchase some of my courses, then uh, the link is actually in the YouTube description. I do have a lot of different courses on different aspects of uh, iOS development. You can see my latest course is about machine learning integration with iOS. I also have a very great, good course, a best-selling course on Swift UI development. So if you want to learn Swift UI, that's the course for you. Or if you want to learn RX Swift, MVVM design pattern, augmented reality, I have tons of courses on many different things. So all the links to my famous courses is right now in the YouTube description. And I highly encourage you to use the uh, links in the description that will allow me to get a little bit of a bigger cut 
from the revenue. Um, and I really hope that you have enjoyed this video. And uh, I am working on a course for test-driven development in iOS using BDD techniques. So hopefully it will be launched in the, in the near future and uh, you will learn more about it. All right, so if you do have any questions, let me know and thank you so much.